the holidays, the most wonderful time of the year, the most horrible time of the year, somewhere in between. It's the most wonderful time of the year. More than half of all people say that their stress goes up considerably during the holidays. Yet we have this myth and fantasy that it's really, truly the best time of year. So I'm going to give you my top 10 countdown of what makes the holidays stressful or even miserable. And as I often say, knowing the problem helps us to fix the problem. And I really want to know if you think I missed something and should have something else on this list. Also, just a heads up, my first two items, you're going to expect these. The rest begin to go a little bit deeper than what you usually read about. So I'm going to start with number 10 and count backwards. But number 10 is budgeting and money. More than 60% of adults polled say that they feel increased stress around money during the holidays, which of course, it makes sense. You might need to travel to see family. You're worried about buying gifts. There's a lot of parties to go to. There's so many extra expenses. But the real pressures under this, right, are somewhat societal pressures. But a lot of it is pressures we put on ourselves, how we are comparing to others, what others will think of us. So number 10 is going to connect to a few others down the line here. Number nine is Budgeting time, shortage of time. 67% of adults say they feel increased stress around a lack of time during the holidays. Sure, your regular life is going on and there's so much more you need to do. Buy gifts for people, attend parties, prepare food, right? The list goes on and on. And how we budget our time, critically important to how we feel, whether we're able to get enough rest, enough time alone. So budgeting your time is as important, if not more important, than budgeting your money. And again, the reason we kind of get out of control in terms of budgeting our time, same things. Societal pressure, family pressure, but mainly pressure on ourselves to conform or to compare ourselves in a positive light or to appear nice or all of those other things. We're going to get into those a little more too. Okay, the number eight reason that the holidays can be miserable is how crazy we are about gifts. Now, I'm not saying only that we buy too many gifts, but everybody's got gift issues. It's just bizarre. There are some people who absolutely love to give gifts. There are other people who hate buying gifts. There's some people who really like to receive gifts, some people who hate receiving gifts, but there tends to be anxiety on all sides of this. So if you're buying gifts for others, you're worried, are you spending too much? Are you spending too little? How much will they spend on you? How much are you spending on other family members? I talked to somebody recently and she said like, oh, she loves to buy gifts. It's really fun for her. But every now and then she'll like find something perfect for somebody and she'll buy it. And then she'll realize, oh no, I spent more on that person. Now I'm going to have to go and spend more on this person. And her whole budget then starts to escalate, right? But the real reason is that the gift is representing something more than a gift of I'm thinking of you. It becomes a representation of how valuable are you to me? How valuable am I to you? We layer all these extra meanings on it. As an extreme example of this, I'm going to share a little clip. Uh, we, we've, we've been all across the world the last couple of years. Like people have been everywhere and because of COVID haven't been able to spend. So this is the first year we're going to be able to spend it all together. We're very grateful for. That's a good thing, right? But... But oh. I love my family. I need to say this. I love oh. my family <laughs> no. a lot. But um, my parents have this um, sort of fun tradition they do where at Christmas they rank us as kids, <laughs> <laughs> which is like kind of their idea of like a, they're parodying like the stereotype of like strict Asian parents. Yeah. Right. They've been doing it for 30 years. So what now do you it's mean rank. So, okay, they line us all up, and this is all of us four adult children, and they <laughs> give you a present. Um, from worst to best child. Oh. Okay. Is there a system? Uh, and yeah, the system is my dad. Uh, my dad says that he has a book and he writes down everything we do. <laughs> also, they don't do Santa. Anyway, look, look, but the thing is, the presents they give you um, relate to your perceived strengths or weaknesses <laughs> of that year. So, wow, that's extreme, right? And that also really demonstrates that gifts aren't just about gifts. I mean, they could be just about gifts. It could just be like, I'm thinking of you. I want to make you happy. And here, this is for you. 
but they don't, they tend to have so much else layered on top of them, right? So as that video showed, this is also going to tie into some of my later points around family dysfunction, but let's stay in order here. Okay, number seven, societal ideals and how or whether we and our families stack up. So this really underlies a lot of the problem with the holidays is that we have these societal ideals, these expectations, these fantasies, myths, of the perfect loving family, everybody gathering cheerfully, behaving in a loving kind way towards each other, having delicious food, everything goes extremely well. Yeah, no, that is just not what happens, right? But having that kind of ideal highlights the dysfunction we have in our own families or the unhappiness, the things we wish were different really get very, very heightened during the holidays because of these ideals. And these ideals are fostered certainly by consumerism and by like advertising and TV and everything we're watching or hearing about, but they can also be fostered by our attachment to them. They can be fostered by our own family system. And we actually can exercise choice in terms of how much we let these ideals bother us. And we are definitely going to talk more in the next bunch of reasons here about expectations and how they can set us up for disappointment and resentment and all sorts of other problems. But we can change some of our own expectations around these events. And we can change the self-criticism that we have around where we don't stack up, right? Like a lot of people during the holidays really worry about how they are comparing to others, whether it's others in their family or how they're comparing to peers or where they are in the stage of life and whether it's where they should be. Those things are really heightened during the holidays. And some of it comes from family pressure. Your relatives saying, ah, you're not married yet. Oh, you're still dating that guy, but he hasn't proposed yet. Or, oh, you're still working as a waitress because you're trying to do your art. Like, what are you doing? You're getting too old for that. So all the judgments and criticisms and comments we get from family members that we don't want, and they're highlighting some fears that we kind of have as well. And it can also be around how we look if we are worried about our body image where we think we should be. This is also related to both a societal ideal and an ideal that we've internalized. And acknowledging that piece here about internalizing these ideals, because that's really where the pain comes from. Yes, society can put pressure on us. Yes, our family can put pressure on us. But unless we are internalizing those ideas, those values, and finding ourselves coming up short, It's only when we're doing that, that we feel pain. Number six reason the holidays can be miserable is all the difficult emotions that come up during the holidays. And if you think about that song I played at the beginning, like, oh, this is a time of year we're supposed to feel joy and happiness. And honestly, many of us do periodically feel those things, but we might also feel all the other emotions we don't really want to feel. So another recent poll showed that 68% of people feel an increase in fatigue during the holidays, 61% feel an increase in stress, and 52% feel an increase in irritability. And about a third of all people feel an increase in sadness, anger, and loneliness. That's a lot of people. So if these difficult emotions are coming up for you, know that you are in a lot of company here. It is very, very normal. Part of the reason it's normal are the things I'm going through today. But it's also just normal to have a lot of different emotions. So I am going to follow this video with some tips on making the holidays less horrible, less stressful. And one of those is going to include acknowledging and accepting and taking care of your own emotions. But we'll come back to that too. And other big emotions that I did not see on the poll, but I would say you probably relate to and let me know, are resentment, guilt, and anxiety. Those seem to be huge during the holidays. And resentment, guilt, and anxiety are very, very tied to dysfunctional family issues. And I'm going to get to that next. Before I do, 
they're also very tied to expectations. So if we are a people pleaser, right, and we really want everybody to be happy, and we have this expectation and this ideal in our head, we're going to feel pretty anxious because it's probably not going to match that ideal. I guarantee not everybody will be happy. So we'll be trying to accomplish something we actually can't accomplish, which leads to anxiety. And then resentment, that's a biggie tied to expectations. We have expectations for others and they don't fulfill them and often we get resentful. We may also feel like we do everything and we're just pouring in energy and effort and attention and we're not getting it back. That leads to resentment and then some level of underlying guilt. So let me go into the reasons underneath those which comes down to dysfunctional family roles. So that's number five on my list. And I do have a bunch of videos on the family roles that go within a dysfunctional family. But even if we have kind of grown up, left our family systems, done all sorts of healing work, done all sorts of recovery, we're really feeling better about ourselves, we turn that knob, walk through the door into our old family home or into the home of a relative we haven't seen for a while, and boom, we are just automatically back in our family role. It's just bizarre how that happens. I know a lot of people feel like they're in some sort of like time warp or time machine or how could this happen, right? How could I be acting this way? And that one's going to connect to another one of mine down the line. But in any case, there's these family roles. So if you grew up as the either hero child or the caretaker, you might be the person who is cooking the food, cleaning up, planning the event, trying to get everybody to show up for the event, making sure you're buying gifts for everybody, making sure other people are buying gifts for everybody. You might even be stepping in and buying gifts for that family member who never buys anybody gifts so that that family member can give gifts to others, but you've bought them for that person, right? So you might be just doing everything because that was your role. And what is that going to lead to? It's going to lead to exhaustion, irritability, stress, all of that, but it's also going to lead to resentment, being angry, being resentful at the other family members who maybe aren't doing anything. It's toxic to us when we feel it, and it's toxic to people around us. Like, I can pick up, if somebody's feeling resentful and they're near me, ooh, I can just feel that energy emanating off of them, and it makes me want to run away, right? And not that I don't ever get resentful. I do, but now I am hyper aware of what that emanates as well. So if that's your role and you develop a lot of resentment, there'll be more on this later. But one guideline is to pull back a little, maybe not do quite as much. Okay, so that's the caretaker role or the hero child role. If you're the scapegoat, holidays might be miserable because you just know you are going to get blamed for everything. You're going to get criticized by everybody. You will probably be resented by that hero child family member and you won't want to be there at all. And then maybe you will skip out or maybe you'll act out or maybe you'll do something to confirm their view that they can blame everything on you. It could be any one of those, but you're going to be very unhappy and you might have even stepped out of this role in other areas of your life. And again, you, when you walk back into that home or that environment, whoosh, you just get sucked right in. And it's also a really lonely place to be the scapegoat when you're the adult child who's still being blamed. I mean, it's hard as a kid as well, but if when you're the adult and you're still being blamed for things that at this point in your life, I do hope you know you are not to be blamed for. It's really lonely and hurtful. It, it, it's sad. You feel hurt that these family members can't see you for who you are. And then if you're the lost child, hmm, you might be upstairs reading or maybe you got sick two days before the event and you don't show up, but you do not want to be there with all the conflict that is happening. You want to just disappear, sink into your chair, go away, have nothing to do with it. And then if you're the mascot and you're the one everybody's relying on to be cheerful and distract them and put on a show, tell jokes, tell good stories, cheer everybody up, well, that's a lot of responsibility. And you might jump right into that role, but you'll probably be left exhausted, resentful, lonely, right? Because nobody knows what's really going on with you. So actually, as I go through these roles, I believe they all land in the same place, which is feeling resentful, 
lonely, misunderstood, and probably even an element of guilt for every single one of those roles because there's some type of guilt that I'm not being who I'm supposed to be or I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. And one reason we end up feeling that way no matter what role we have is that we're not roles. We're, we are full human beings who have all sorts of sides to us. We're multifaceted. We are not always just this or that or that and being shoved into those rigid roles, even when we are jumping in and performing them automatically, maybe not willingly, but sort of automatically, even when we're doing that, we don't really want to be. We want to be loved and acknowledged for who we are. So that's why those roles all end up in the same difficult emotions. All right, the number four reason that the holidays can be incredibly difficult for us is grief. Now, grief has a lot of levels. So starting with grief of having lost somebody who has died, right? That is a very prominent grief. Holidays can really highlight it. That is, that's where you're used to seeing the person. Or maybe it's a person you would rely on. Maybe somebody you would talk to when your family issues were hard. They were somebody you would run to and talk to and now you can't. Or maybe it was your favorite grandma or grandpa or uncle or aunt who really provided you with a sense of well-being and safety. And the fact that they're not here anymore is just highlighted by the holidays, right? And then there's another type of grief. There's a grief about changing family structures, a grief about losing traditions, a grief about a change in family dynamics. So this is one that I've really been experiencing the last few years. So between my husband and I, our kids are now between 26 and 34 years old. The oldest have two kids of their own, right? Everybody lives across the country, all different places. So we no longer have like these large family gatherings that we used to have. And a lot of the change is positive. But with the holidays, there just seems to be something. Everybody's starting their own families, which is good. I'm pro. It's wonderful, right? But I might have to choose which household do I visit over the holiday? Where do I travel during the different holidays? I'm no longer hosting them, which is both good and bad, right? So there's there's positives and negatives, but there are certainly some traditions that I'm grieving right now. I really am. And there's a sadness. So again, the change is positive and what I would have wanted for my kids, but there's also a loss there. So this happens for people in all sorts of ways, right? It could be that an adult child gets married and then begins to spend the holidays with the other person's family, which is normal and positive and good, but it can be a loss. Or a favorite relative who's passed away, you're both grieving that person and you're grieving the holidays that they used to support and host and the gatherings that would happen at their house. So there's so many different levels of grief and it really is heightened during these holiday seasons and these family traditions and gathering events. All right, the last three top reasons the holidays can be miserable. Number three, difficult choices. We have a lot of difficult choices to make during the holidays. As I was just saying, which families do we visit? Which families do we not visit, right? And then if we have really toxic family members, we may also be facing a choice of, do we invite them? Do we not invite them? Do we see them over the holidays? Do we not? So you have difficult choices with regard to your budget of time and your budget of money that we talked about initially, right? But also on a deeper level, that one family member who ends up upsetting everybody and really having a horrible time, maybe even starts throwing things or getting violent, if you don't invite them, that's a difficult choice. If you do invite them, that's a difficult choice. More subtle issues around the same thing could be if you have somebody in your life who's like incredibly invasive in a way that you really feel is insulting and you don't like it. Do you set firm boundaries during the holidays? Do you not? Because setting those firm boundaries might make things uncomfortable for other people. 
often I feel that making things uncomfortable for people is better than suffering and attack, but these are all really hard choices. And when you watch the video I'll be recording next on ways to make the holidays better, right? It really goes to values. What do I value? What do I want out of this? And following our values can really help guide us in making some of these choices. Reason number two, our expectations of others. So one of the root reasons that family gatherings and holidays can be painful for us, which ties to those societal ideals, ties to those dysfunctional family roles, ties to all of the other stuff I'm talking about, but it specifically is having expectations of others that they have probably already proven to you that they are not going to meet. Now, expecting good behavior from people, expecting kind behavior, those are great expectations. But if you have somebody in your life who has consistently shown you that they are not going to meet those behaviors, they are not going to do what should be done, then having those expectations, despite what has already been proven to you, is going to cause you pain. So there's a saying you've probably heard of expect the unexpected, which is true in many cases. But with regard to family members, expect the expected. I am going to attribute that to one of the people who's working with me right now who does not want to be named, but I think it is a great phrase. Expect the expected. So if you have a family member who shows up, doesn't bring any food, doesn't bring gifts for others, and then doesn't contribute and help with the dishes, and that's what they've done year after year after year, and they might come up with really good excuses why they do that or don't do that, right? <laughs> expect it. Just expect it. It will be easier, really. And I think sometimes people feel like, well, I don't want to expect bad behavior because then I'm kind of like rolling over and like letting them walk all over me. I'm being a doormat if I expect it. No, if you expect it, you're being reasonable. And if you expect it, then you can make your choices, right? What choices do you have control over? If that person is going to act that way, no matter what, and you have probably tried a thousand things over the years, yelling at them, talking to them, complaining to other family members about them, asking them over and over. Maybe you ask them and they get up and they do a couple of dishes and then they disappear to go have a smoke or whatever it is they disappear to do, or suddenly they don't feel well, right? You've tried all sorts of things to get them to change their behavior and their behavior isn't changing. So what if their behavior still doesn't change, but rather than feeling resentful and angry and irritated and annoyed and stressed, you have accepted that is how that person is going to act and I'm going to have fun anyway. I'm going to do what I want to do, put in the effort I want to put in and enjoy myself as best I can. Because if you think about those two different situations, one where you're expecting the person to do something different, the other where you are expecting them to do what they're doing and you see it as a movie, what's happening is exactly the same in both movies. What's different? is how you feel. And number one, the number one reason that the holidays are stressful and even miserable is the expectations that we have of ourselves and our disappointment in ourselves when we don't meet those expectations. So those expectations could be related to the fact of you're like, okay, I know I'm going back into my family system and I am not going to jump right into that caretaker role. I'm not, I'm not. And then you do, and then you're disappointed in yourself and that causes you pain. Or it could be your expectation that you should be somewhere else in life, that you should be at a different place, that you should already have achieved this promotion at work or gotten married or had kids or whatever. Those expectations that you have of yourself, which then tie to disappointment and tie to self-criticism, that's one of the biggest things causing you pain. Your negative self-talk, your negative core beliefs, which then become emphasized and confirmed by all the different events around the holidays. And this is all happening here. So I'm not saying that we have total control over that because we have been 
trained and formed and we've grown up in certain ways to believe these different things, but we do have some agency to begin to be more compassionate to ourselves, speak to ourselves in a kinder way, give ourselves a break once in a while, accept our own limitations. Very helpful to do that in a sort of realistic manner, right? What can I accomplish? What can't I? So a lot of this entire list of 10 issues comes down to how you feel about yourself and how you are able to set boundaries for yourself with other people and with yourself. And I do have a bunch of resources on this, a bunch of other videos, and I also would really like to know, did I miss one of the top 10 reasons that the holidays are miserable for you? And make sure to check out the video I have on how to turn this around. Okay, thanks so much, and I'll see you soon, and I hope you're able to enjoy your holidays a little bit this year.